what the hell is going on here guys is this some kind of a scam or what why is this one 45 dollars and why is this one 180 dollars they look the same this one is actually bigger yeah <laughs> what is going on welcome to another video as some of you know i've upgraded my telescope from an 8 inch f6 to 12 inch f5 you might remember in a previous video of mine about budget eyepieces, I spoke how the focal ratio of the telescope is really important and the lower that focal ratio, the better eyepieces you need. I have here some premium eyepieces that I bought recently and all my budget stuff, I got something with the telescope and by the end of this video, we will find out who will survive inside big 12 inch F5 telescope. And also, I want to cover a little bit what makes an eyepiece premium and why there is such a big difference in price. Maybe not in quality, maybe not in the image, but price can be very, very big for some of these uh, eyepieces. Let's start from the very bottom. First, we have a Plossel. I got this one with my new telescope. It's a brand new Plossel. First thing I did with this one, to simply sell it on the second market. It's already sold, I already got the money, so I need to save it. Otherwise, I would throw it away, just like the previous Plossel. Next in the line are these red lines. This is an excellent, excellent eyepiece for the money that they go for. These days, you can get them for $20 from AliExpress. Really. I have not seen a better eyepiece in terms of value versus performance. If you have a telescope, which is let's say F8, F10, F12, these are going to perform really well. This is a very old design, it's a conic design, it was designed for slower telescopes, so these are really good. Problem is, in my 12 inch F5, they really start to break apart. The edges, they are very messed up. Even the center is softer than this a little bit more premium eyepiece. I did a lot of testing a few days ago with the 15 millimeter and this one, 14 millimeter. Obviously, we can see there is a huge difference. Yeah, these are 14 millimeter, 15 millimeter. This one is 65 degrees, maybe 67. This is the same, 67. But obviously, we can see that extremely big difference, physical difference. And obviously when you look through this one, in the faster telescope, it's softer, the edges are messed up. And when you look at this one, it's really clear. It's clear as a plossel and only the edges are a little bit um, messed up because I don't have a common corrector yet. Now, as I mentioned before, you don't really need better eyepieces depending on your telescope. Keep in mind, with a couple of these, I observed the entire Messier catalog, so it's completely doable. But as you progress to better telescopes, to faster telescopes, you might want to focus a little bit more on quality than uh, just quantity. And that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm selling a lot of this stuff and just putting the money into a couple of nice eyepieces. So the red lines, these are also going away. I already have a sale agreed, 60 bucks. They cost me maybe like 120, brand new. Two years ago, they were a bit more expensive. Not a bad deal. For $60, I had eyepieces for two years and now they are going away to a better home. This one is going away as well. This one. This one as well. Bye bye. <laughs> Next in the line, we have the 2 inch eyepieces. These are so called Kellner design, very old design. So, again, they work really nice in an 8 inch F6, even better F8, F10 telescopes, not as well in the F5. In the F5, this 40 meter, it just completely breaks apart. The edges are really, really, really bad. This one costs like $50. $45, $40. I'm also getting rid of them, selling them for like 70% of the value brand new. Not a bad deal. I had some nice ice pieces for the cheap for such a long time. This one going away, going away, going away. Next in the line, we have 
a GSO SuperView which came with my telescope 30mm. This is a little bit pricier, it costs like 70, 80, 90 dollars maybe. It's also uh, the same like Orion Q70. It's not bad, it's not bad. Problem is the edges are, the edges are a little bit uh, blurry and again it's suffering a little bit in the edges. Since I got a better 30mm one, I'm also selling this one away. It's also already sold, so you've already found a better home. I need to save it, keep it and send it on Monday to the lucky new owner. What we have here is a budget SV Boney Zoom eyepiece. This is really nice for that money. It cost me like 60 euros, like 60 dollars, something like that. And I'm keeping this one until I get a better zoom. I'm thinking about the Hyperion zoom. If I found it on the used marketplace, probably I will get that one and then again sell this one. So I'm keeping this one. Next we have our Barlow's. Barlow 2 and Barlow 3. What these do is they take an eyepiece and increase its magnification by 2 or by 3. And if you unscrew this part and screw it directly to the eyepiece, it increases magnification only by 1.5. I did a lot of testing with these Barlow's. I took the Barlow 2, screwed it at the bottom of this one, which gave me 9mm. I then compared it with this 9mm and the difference was really amazing. This one was a lot better with the Barlow than just this one alone and that's what finally convinced me to get rid of these in the F5 telescope and just keep this one with the Barlow. A lot better than a single eyepiece. Fixed eyepieces may be better, but not always, especially budget compared to a little bit premium ones. And of course, I got these few weeks ago. These are some uh, premium eyepieces under the brand of Angel Eyes. We will talk a little bit closer about this one, 40mm. And this one, it's truly the crown jewel of my collection and the collection of many others. It's considered one of the best eyepieces in the world. It comes at $180 per piece. It's a copy of the APM 30mm Ultra Flat Field eyepiece. The field is really really nice 70 degrees and when you look through it there are really almost no errors whatsoever it's like really looking like a flat picture really amazing we will see right now what is the difference between this one and the cheaper ones so long story short out of all the eyepieces in my collection i'm keeping one two three eyepieces and two barlows that's it that's it. It's because when I was observing the entire Messier catalog, I found out that I'm using basically just three eyepieces. Yeah. I use a large 2 inch to find the object and observe big open clusters, open areas of space. Then I focus closer a little bit with some kind, something like 14 15 millimeter one. And if needed, I'm using the zoom to really dial in the magnification as needed. And for the planets, it's real simple. I put the zoom into a 3 times Barlow and just increase from a little bit zoom to 600, 500 magnification as needed. Same with the moon. The moon looks actually amazing in this one. We're going to compare this 15 millimeter to this 15, 14 millimeter. The view in this is actually very similar in size. When I look through this one, from 60 to 100% in the edges, it's blurry, it's messy, it's messed up. And this one, it's a lot clearer. What makes this one better? Well, it has a lot more glass. Look at this diagram. It's actually a copy of the Hyperion uh, uh, eyepiece. It's also a pan panoptic design, very famous design. It has a lot of glass, so from here until here, and that's what makes the premium eyepiece. You pay for all this extra glass. This extra glass has maybe better polishing, maybe better um, reflectivity, maybe better coatings. Everything is just better. And it's not too much, to be honest. It's like $85 from AliExpress. 
you can easily find eyepieces for 900 for one thousand dollars so from that point of view it's not really that much for the performance it brings this one is just 20 dollars so obviously it cannot compete but in slower telescopes it's a really nice eyepiece as i said most of the messier catalog are observed with this small guy so really nice one i'm a little bit sad that it has to go but the time has come to move to something better and now we have some very interesting situation. We have a 32mm Kellner, $45. GSO Superview, 30mm, $90. And Sky Rover, 30mm, Ultra Flat Field, $180. What the hell is going on here, guys? Is this some kind of a scam or what? Why is this one $45 and why is this one $180? They look the same, this one is actually bigger, yeah. <laughs> what is going on? This is what is going on. When you look at these schematics, you look inside the eyepiece, you find out there's a big difference into the amount of glass that goes into these eyepieces. If I take this one, it's like 250 grams, this one is twice as heavy. It's a really heavy eyepiece. If I open it, the glass starts from here all the way until here. It's full of glass. And this is high quality glass, it's good design, it's really one of the best pieces IPs in the world. Anybody you ask on the internet, even in faster telescope, this is like really, really, really good. It's so good that any other eyepiece looks lousy to be honest, even this one. This one is an airfoil design, a little bit older design, but not that bad. It's actually pretty good, except for I didn't like the edges. They were a little bit blurry and they were a little bit vignetting, so I didn't quite like that. But for that money, for $90, it's a really nice eyepiece and it's great that GSO provides these with new telescopes. That's the primary reason why I would buy in the future a GSO telescope instead of Skywatcher because they give these ones for free with the telescope. And now that I'm selling it away, I'm actually getting some money back. <laughs> and the last one, this is the cheapest two inch eyepiece that you can find. It's a Kellner design, very old design, very simple design. It has just a couple of uh, lenses and it allows you some really nice views. In F6 it has its limitations and F5 I was not that happy at all. In F5, if you don't want to spend $180 for this one, the GSO Superview, it's a really nice middle of the road alternative which will not break your bank and will provide some nice views. Now let's have a closer look as to what the image is like in these three. What is the actual difference that you will see in an F5 telescope? I don't know about F8. I've never used them, F6 not that bad, but F5, let's see the difference and why I'm finally selling these two and keeping just this one. Here you see three simulated views, I tried to the best of my ability to simulate what I saw in these ones, I tested them for an hour a few days ago. Here in this one the problem is you cannot focus the stars all across the field, if you focus the stars in the middle the edges will be blurry. If you focus the stars in the edges, the center will be blurry. This is called the curvature of the field, which is produced by the eyepiece itself. Also, you'll find out that the stars around the edges are kind of messed up. This is astigmatism combined with coma coming from the telescope, so it, it's just a mess. The way to use this eyepiece is to simply focus on the center, and if you want to have a look at the stars on the side, you move the telescope, not your eyes. <laughs> Not very convenient, but pretty useful, and in F6 it's not that bad. The Q70 on the other hand, if you have a look at this simulated view, it has some vignetting, some very blurriness around the edge. The circle is not as big as this one, as the cheaper one. But the stars are clearer, it's easier to focus across the field. Not perfect, but it's a little bit better, it's getting better. And when you look around at the most expensive one, it's really the view is like a picture everything is sharp you can focus the star at any point of the field there are no messy stars there is nothing um, messed up 
even without a comma corrector in F5, the stars are really sharp across the entire screen. Given that at the telescope at any given night for 50% of the time I'm using a 13mm 2 inch, I figured out it's worth the investment. Not to mention that when we speak about price of eyepieces, this is just temporary price. The greatest thing about eyepieces is that they are not losing value. $180, if I wanted to sell it tomorrow, I would get $150 back. So for who knows how long I will use this eyepiece, it will cost me only $30, $40. When the day comes to sell it, I get my money back. Even cheap stuff, even these that I bought $30, I'm selling them for $15. So half of the money I'm getting back. It's not as if when you buy a premium eyepiece, you lose that money forever. Most of that money remains and the value is not lost with optics. It remains for a very, very, very long time. I'm pretty sure this one, being one of the best eyepieces in the world ever, will keep its value. And that's pretty much it. These guys are going away. I'm keeping my nice new eyepiece collection. And at some point in the future, I may cover some of these in a much bigger detail, you know, get a proper review. I think it's really worth it, especially to have a look at the Sky Rover. So subscribe, follow, like if you like. <laughs> That's that. Have a good night, have clear skies. It's cloudy here for most of the year, so I have to do videos. <laughs> Bye.